y'all better just go ahead and buckle up because guess what? We have 20 more Cricut hacks that we cannot wait to share with you. We have went through, sat around meetings, and planning the best Cricut hacks to take your crafting to that true next level. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe to the Makers Learn channel. Try us out for a dollar, first link down below, and let's go ahead and dive right into these 20 more Cricut hacks. This first hack is going to blow you away. Have you ever wondered how different boutiques sell vinyl decals with this amazing offset backer and it already has the transfer tape built in and it looks super professional? Well, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can do it today really easily right inside of Cricut Design Space. All right, first things first, you need to go ahead, dive into Cricut Design Space with me and you're going to want to grab a text box. Today we're using the Claire font for today's project. You're gonna simply type out your word. Our word today is maker, so M-A-K-E-R. And once you have maker, make sure that it is set up the way that you would like it. We are simply going to now add that offset. And this offset, I will tell you, when you're doing something like this, you wanna make it quite a bit larger than you would a typical offset. So maybe 2.5 uh, or 2.7 would be a really good size for you to do the offset. We're going to do rounded corners and we will weld the offset. So now that you have this selected, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the maker to a different color just so you can see it easier. All right, and that's all we did to get to where we're at with our top one. So now that we're there, I'm gonna delete out our bottom and we have our maker set up right here. It's two simple layers. You have the text and then you have the offset. Now where it's going to get more complex is when we go to the make it area. This is a brand new process that you will need to understand. So I recommend to listen up and really focus in on this training, all right? So click make it. Once you've clicked make it, you're going to see the first mat is our offset. And our offset is positioned in the top left-hand corner like it always would be on a vinyl decal, okay? When we click on mat two, you can also see our maker, our text is positioned in the top left-hand corner because traditionally we would cut them separate and then apply it after, right? What we're going to do today is we are going to bring in our offset to the second mat. And this may take a second for us to understand what's going on, but stick with me because this will be a game changer. All right, so let's go to mat one. Let's take this offset and let's move object. If you've never moved objects from one mat to another, it's pretty magical. So we're going to select that second mat and we're going to press confirm. Now you're going to notice that both images are positioned in the top left-hand corner. But look right here. You can see it's not perfectly centered because it's still positioning that maker text in the top left-hand corner, not acknowledging there's an offset. Why is that important? You'll find out soon. So all we need to do is we need to position our maker text in the center of our offset. And look right here. Super simple. I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see this really, really well. And we can move it a hair. And you're going to see it's positioned right there. Okay? The next thing we need to do is we need to, believe it or not, delete out our offset. Our offset is now going to be removed. We are just using it for this mat purpose of being able to position our maker. Okay, so we'll click the three X's and we'll go hide selected. So now we simply just have the maker text with the maker's gonna learn Claire font. Looks beautiful. We're gonna press continue. We're going to connect to our machine and we're simply going to cut it out. All right, the first thing we need to do is just apply the vinyl onto our Cricut mat, and I'm just gonna burnish it down, just like so. Now we're going to load it into our machine and just cut out 
our maker text. Now we're gonna unload this. And all you wanna do is grab your weeding tool and we're going to weed out our text here. I always weed on the mat, but even if you are someone that does not weed on the mat, if you're wanting to do this hack, you must weed on the mat. I absolutely love this technique, but to be able to do it successfully, you have to weed on the mat. And look, it cut out beautifully. So we're just gonna grab those inner pieces really fast. And now that you've been able to finish weeding your project, what you're going to do before anything else, you must add your transfer tape. Now we ordered this special clear transfer tape. We have it linked down below. It has no grid on it, which is awesome. And we're going to apply it down onto the mat, just like so. And now we're going to burnish this down, just like this. We're gonna burnish it down. And now we are going to go ahead and set this up in design space for us to cut out our offset with the built-in transfer tape ready to go to make it look super store-bought. Now we're back on the canvas. We're going to delete out our maker text, or you can leave it, whichever, and you're going to press make it, and look what's going to happen. It's going to put that uh, offset in the top left-hand corner, right where we need it. So now what we're going to do is just cut out the offset. We're going to press continue. We're going to connect to our machine, and here's the setting we recommend. We recommend glitter vinyl setting because it gives a thicker, deeper pressure to cut through the backer and your transfer tape to have it all set up so you can sell or give away your vinyl decal with super simple ease. So I'm gonna browse all material. I'm gonna select glitter and we're gonna select glitter vinyl. We'll press done. We're gonna load this into our machine and simply cut it out. All right, my friends. So now after it's cut, you wanna kinda, of, without unloading it, you want to do a little like poke and see if it, you know, it's cut all the way through. And if for some reason, like mine, it is not cut all the way through, here's what you're going to do. Leave it loaded in the machine. All you're going to do is press the Cricut button again, and it's going to let it recut. So we're going to press that, and it's going to cut through once again. All right, after that, I tested and it looks like it is cut through. So now all you're gonna do is peel this back and then look right here. We have our decal all cut through and it looks so good. Oh my goodness, look right here. We have our maker decal that is ready to go. It is so worthy. And I think you guys are gonna be super, super impressed being able to take this and either give this out, like I said, sell it and so much more. If you never thought you could do this with your Cricut, think again, this would be even easier if you're doing bulk cuts. You would just repeat the same process over say 10 stickers at a time or 12 stickers at a time instead of doing just one. It takes the same amount of time to do 10 as it does just one. Hack number two is going to be probably one of your favorites and I'm super, super excited. Have you ever been trying to decide on a decal? You've been measuring and you're like, okay, I kind of decided the size of the decal, but then I'm like, wait, what size do I cut the vinyl to make sure that it's go cut right? Different things like that. I wanna put you on to this hack right here we learned on TikTok and it is super, super cool. So all you need is a few sheets of cardstock. I recommend variations of colors. And then you can start taking the different squares, like say the 10 by 10 square. And you're like, okay, this is way too much vinyl. Like I don't need that much. But then let's try the eight by eight one. So you're just trying out these different pieces of paper. And you're like, oh my gosh, my decal will totally fit inside of the eight by eight. So you can just kind of go through and decide different things like this. So I really, really love this hack when you're trying to figure out sizing, when you're trying to see what size square of vinyl or heat transfer vinyl you need, especially when it comes to making t-shirts, when you're sizing vinyl on wooden blanks, different things like that. And it's really easy to set this up in Cricut Design Space as well. Cut it out just right with a Sharpie, 
the size here and now you'll have this ready to go. You get really inspired by these when you look at color swatches, things like that for cardstock, vinyl, heat transfer vinyl. Consider having one of these for just all of your blanks, t-shirts, and so much more. As you can see over here in Cricut Design Space, all you need to do is start with simple basic shapes and you wanna go through and create your sizes. Starting from the smallest, three by three, next would be four by four, next would be five by five, six by six, seven by seven, eight by eight, nine by nine, 10 by 10, and last but not least, 11 by 11. That is all you need to do, cut these squares out. We use a regular hole punch, or you could have the Cricut cut it out. We used Baker's twine to attach it, and now we just wrote the different sizes on here, and we have these ready to go. I think this is a huge win for paper crafters as well. So if you don't work with HTV or vinyl, I think even as a paper crafter, you'll appreciate this one too. Have you ever wanted to be able to address your own envelopes with the Cricut? This hack is gonna teach you exactly how to do it. It's super easy, let me put you onto it, but the secret is the Makers Gonna Learn sketch fonts. If you're not a Makers Gonna Learn member, you can try us out for only a dollar right down below. And we're super excited because you get 20 download credits for only a dollar. That comes out to like five cents per download in your seven day trial. And I wanna encourage you to try out a Makers Gonna Learn sketch font. Head on over to our font area type in the word sketch and you'll see any one of our fonts that are a sketch font, meaning you will be able to use a Cricut pen inside the Cricut to draw and it doesn't do bubble letters. It will actually be the monoline font that it is going to draw. So you can choose from any of these. There's so many, choose one of your favorites and download it onto your computer, all right? Now let's head back over to Cricut Design Space and all you're going to want to do is add a rectangle. You're going to add a rectangle that is the same size as your envelope, okay? It's very important that you do this. Once you have done that, you are going to want to add a text box and you are going to want to select one of your sketch fonts. Once you've downloaded it, you may need to reload Cricut Design Space by going up to View and Reload so that Cricut will be aware of that new font download, right? And you will want to pick one of your fonts. We have been using Affirmations. You could also use the Cobblestone Sketch. I love this for an envelope. You could put Bell Family. You can type out your address, one, two, three, Lake Road, you know, you can just top in your address. I'm just making up one here. So you can type that out and you're gonna want to scale it down, anything like that. And we like to leave these centered. So you would just center it. And then before you move forward, what you would want to do is it's go automatically think you wanna cut out those letters but that's not what we're doing today. So go up to operation and you're going to click under draw. You're going to select pin. Now today we're using these gel pins, which we absolutely love and they look great on the envelope. So that's all you're going to do. You would position it right on the envelope. Like we have our sample that says the Lewis family. You will now press make it. Once you have clicked make it, you're going to see that you're going to want to bring over this rectangle to the first map. So we're going to move object and move it to the first map. That way we have our mat and our drawing on the same map. And all you'll do is center the Lewis family right here in the middle. You'll zoom in position it right where you want it. And then all you're going to do is once it's positioned right where you want it, you're going to remove your envelope size by clicking hide object. It's super simple. You're just going to select it and click hide selected. Now you're going to see 
all it's going to do is write with your pen on the envelope that is on your mat. It's super easy to load these pins in. You're going to open the pin up and you're going to open clamp A, press it down until you hear a click, and then you'll be ready to go ahead and draw with your envelope. Look at this right here. You don't have to do any cutting. The Cricut did all the drawing. So you could set up multiple of these onto your mat so that you have an amazing ability for you to be able to write on your very own envelopes anyone that you're mailing something out to, which it'll look super handmade and super, super special. This one is my favorite hack. Leave me a comment down below if you think so too. This next hack has all to do with your heat press. If you've ever wanted to protect your heat press, this hack is gonna be for you. You're gonna need a 16 by 20 inch sheet of Teflon. We got this in a three pack from Amazon and it is super easy to use. You're also gonna pick up some large magnets. And all you're going to do is you're gonna wrap this around the top of your heat press. The reason why this is so important to actually protect your heat plate from anything sublimation related, cricket related, anything like that, you want to protect it. Replacing a Teflon sheet is way easier than constantly having to be worried about cleaning a heat plate that gets sublimation ink on it or anything like that. Because if you know you get any type of sublimation ink onto the heat plate, guess what? You come back a few weeks later to heat uh, press something else down. When you come back a few weeks later to press something else down, guess what will happen? That ink will reactivate and go into that next project from your previous image. You do not want that, okay? So add the Teflon sheet right here and it's super easy. You're going to use a magnet on each side to position it and magnetize it to the top of the press. You're gonna wrap it around and then you're also gonna do that to the opposite side too, so that it's nice and attached. Be sure to do this hack when the heat press is cool, not warm at all. This next hack, have you ever struggled with getting any type of letters to have enough adhesive on it? Specifically the very thin letters and the words that your ATG gun cannot pick up, right? Let me share with you this really fun hack that we have using a sticky note and your favorite type of glue. Today we're using Aline's uh, Tacky Glue, but you could use any type of glue for this hack. You're simply go take some Aline's Tacky Glue, you're gonna put it on a sticky note and then we're gonna thin it out. So you're just gonna put some of the glue right here on the sticky note and you can kind of take it and we're just gonna thin this out. You want a nice thin area of glue, okay? So we're just thinning this out just like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up our cut out word and we're just going to take it and kind of press it into the glue so that all these thin little areas are getting tacky. Since you're already doing the hack for the small areas, you could do this for the entire word if you would like. And you can see this small area right here would never be able to get adhesive any other way. And then when you look at the back, you're gonna see that adhesive is covering the entire word now, just by simply taking it, picking it up. And once you verify that there's enough adhesive all over the word, you're gonna take it and apply it to your scrapbook page, your card. For today's project, we have an offset we're applying this to, and you're just gonna apply this down. And thanks to the Aline's glue with the sticky note, we have even coverage. And what I love about this glue is it draws clear as well. So now you've been able to add adhesive really quickly, really easily, and affordably to have this offset look awesome for your next project. Our next hack is gonna be one that you're gonna fall in love with. If you wanna avoid having to work with cardstock and the reverse tweezers and the glue, here's what you can do instead. Guess what type of vinyl automatically is ready to go. You can line up super easily before having to commit to it. So unlike vinyl, vinyl you're going to have to, uh, only one shot to apply it down, right? What can you apply and work with to position it perfectly and have multiple attempts? That is heat transfer vinyl. It already has built-in adhesive, but it has to be, what? Heat activated, right? So look right here. We can take 
our heat transfer vinyl and use it onto cardstock. If you've never seen this, I have been able to use heat transfer vinyl on cardstock, on napkins, and so much more. Look how easy it is. Line it up, position it right down, make sure it's centered up. And the cool thing again about the heat transfer vinyl is if I don't like this positioning, I can pull it up, reapply it. I'm not committed to the first time I lay it down on the cardstock, but once you're happy with it, grab your mini easy press. You're going to use five to 10 seconds over the whole area. Um, and you're going to see how this begins to apply down to the cardstock. And once this cools, look at this. You can now peel it back and wow, there is no mess. It was super easy. And now you have heat transfer vinyl on your cardstock and it looks absolutely awesome for your next project. This hack is super simple. Cut out some small hearts, circles, whatever shape you prefer. And we're actually gonna use it to mark our carrier sheet and we're gonna use it to mark the front. So the front here can lay flat, it can get dirty, dusty, but what this is gonna signify is the opposite of where the heart is, is actually the clean side. So let's go ahead and apply a heart to this right here and then I'll explain further. So we're gonna take one of our hearts, we just cut out on a scrap sheet of vinyl. We're gonna apply it onto the top, right like so. So you'd wanna do this to all your Cricut mats. And then when you peel it back, what you're gonna notice is this is the clean side. So you don't want dust, debris, or anything to touch this because this is go go straight onto the mat. And if there's debris, then it'll get on the mat. It'll make your mat, you know, need to be replaced sooner, things like that. So now that I know that this is the clean side, I would lay it down backwards. So then when I'm ready and done with my mat for the day, I would pick this up, I would find my heart right here. I'd be like, okay, this is the dirty side. It is the one that could have debris on it. I'm gonna line it up just like this and place it down. Before doing this hack, what happened for me was I was just applying it, you know, either side, anything like that. And I wasn't being conscious of the side that was picking up the debris, the dust, and my mats were not lasting near as long. So if you're a budget crafter, you definitely want to do this hack and know which side is which. Have you ever cut out small intricate letters on vinyl and when you start peeling them back, you find that you have letters some peeled up, but some staying down. It happens to me time and time again. But what I wanna to offer to you today is that you need to go with gravity and do this instead. What you'll wanna do instead is actually lay it flat with the backer side facing up. You're gonna burnish with a burnishing tool. I would do three or four passes to burnish it down. And then you're going to peel it with going with gravity, which means peeling the backer side off. So now you can see you've been able to peel up your very small, tiny letters with the going with gravity method. That is taking it, flipping it backwards, burnishing, and then peeling off to make sure you've helped the vinyl get attached to the transfer tape. This will save you every single craft project. Do you love the look of etching, but guess what? You are scared to work with the chemicals. Maybe you have a respiratory issue where you're not able to work with chemicals like etching. I know many of our members here at Makers Gonna Learn want to find an alternative. And this right here is something I've got to put you on to. This is Cricut Premium Vinyl and it is permanent frosted. So it's going to give you the etched look. Like, look at this, this looks etched, but it's secretly vinyl. It looks so good and you didn't have to work with any scary chemicals. You didn't have to wait 20 minutes. You didn't have to take it to a sink and wash it off. You didn't see, you know, have to create a stencil, anything like that. You literally use the frosted vinyl like you normally would, cut it out and then apply it to any of your glass objects. Think about how quicker it'll make your etching projects. And here's what we've done for you. 
We've given you a video link right down below to get this full tutorial, as well as a link to this product to check it out. I think you're gonna be really impressed with being able to get an etched look without the etching smell, the etching time, and the sink required to do etching. This hack gives a whole new concept to reverse weeding, but we're using painter's tape. We're working with the frog tape, yellow tape, because we find that it is able to see through a little bit better compared to blue painter's tape, but you'd also use the blue painter's tape, or you could even use masking tape. But this right here is going to be what we're doing. So we're using, again, an example with some really small letters that would typically be hard to weed. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab just a little bit of painter's tape. And sometimes I like to challenge myself to work with new material like painter's tape for a Cricut project. And the reason why is guess what? Sometimes you may be out of transfer tape and you will only have painter's tape. So I like to just familiarize myself with using other material. So we just need a little bit of the tape. We're gonna apply it down onto the letters and we're gonna burnish. Now we're going to peel it up, we're gonna flip it around back, just like so, and we're going to burnish again. So what we're going to do here, and the hope, is that we're gonna get the letters to stay attached to the transfer tape, as in the painter's tape, and then we're gonna peel up the rest of the vinyl. So if you wanna do this in two steps, your first step would be remove the backer, and now with your finger or a weeding tool, you're going to peel off this right here. So this is the excess vinyl. So this is essentially reverse weeding with painter's tape. And these letters are so small. And look at how easy it is. And it helps you because you know that your vinyl is staying down thanks to the painter's tape. And then you will just use a pin pin tool to weed out the inner pieces and you'll be good to go. So now that you've weeded out the inner pieces, you now have been able to reverse weed your really small letters and you can apply it to any type of blank that you have for your project, whether it's glass, wood, so on and so forth. You would just burnish it down onto your object. This next hack is something I wish someone told me sooner and I just developed it because it was literally causing me so many craft fails that I had to, all right? Anytime you've cut something out and you're ready to weed it, typically we always recommend for you to start in a corner, right? So we always start in a corner and we start weeding. So when we start in the corner and we start weeding, what tends to happen is that a lot starts happening at once. And that's the only way I can describe it. And what I wanna recommend to you is you can see like, there's all sorts of letters. There's a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong. So what I have started to do and have been doing for quite a while that's helped me, and I think this will help you, is when you're a quarter of the way through, stop what you're doing, grab your scissors and cut off all this excess vinyl because what was happening for me was this would start getting re-stuck down and start causing me to have a craft fail. So I'm just gonna cut this off right here and you're gonna see how it simplifies my design and I'll be so much less overwhelmed with this design. And you can see cutting it, I can then ravel it up into a ball and then just continue weeding. And you may end up wanting to cut off more or not. But just cutting it a little bit helps me stay less overwhelmed and then I'll be able to have my design ready to go. So do you see how being able to cut off the excess vinyl that you're peeling up will help you, especially when you're doing 12 by 24 inch letters or anything like that, especially if you're using a Cricut Venture, the new larger Cricut machine, you're going to see that it is definitely needed to cut off some of that excess vinyl to help you not go into having a craft fail. Anytime you're working with glitter heat transfer vinyl, metallic heat transfer vinyl, and quite a few other materials, they require a cool peel. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna share with you our super new hack 
for you to be able to get a cold pill really quick. So we have this pumpkin spice girl cut out with glitter heat transfer vinyl. We're going to apply it down. We're going to heat it with the mini easy press. And then we have an ice pack from our freezer and we're gonna use it to cool it down really quickly. Super simple to help you get crafty even easier. So now that you've heated it down, typically you'd have to wait multiple minutes for this to cool. Well, guess what? Grab your kid's ice pack and just apply it down. And this is going to cool down your heat transfer vinyl so much faster so that you can have your design ready to go and peel off the transfer tape. And you can see, I mean, it works super quick. And you can tell the vinyl is already attached really, really well. And then we're just gonna peel off the transfer tape. As you can see, it works really, really well. And we're just gonna peel off this carrier sheet. And look right here, you have your glitter HTV onto your shirt faster and easier than ever. I don't know if you've ever wanted this, but I've got it for you today. I'm gonna to teach you how to distress your heat transfer vinyl before even cutting to create a really fun look for your next project. We have a tea towel that we did for a college football. And I do have to say, it looks like it's a distressed font, but it's actually not. We distress the vinyl even before we cut it. Let me show you how we do it with a cheese grater. So you're gonna to wanna to put it on the edge of your table. I recommended like an edge of a craft table, your kitchen counter, anything like that. And then you're gonna take the cheese grater and you're simply going to distress it. And you can do this as much or as little as you would like. Try not to do it too much because again, this still has to cut through with the Cricut. And we found from our testing, it is able to cut through it. It's totally fine. But again, you're just gonna want to be distressing it. And you're gonna see how it makes it look super aged. And I think that's super fun because sometimes some types of fonts have a distressed look and they're hard to cut. So this is our way to get a distressed look without having to go through the hassle of a distressed font. So once you've distressed it just a little bit, like I said, you could do as much or as little. I just like to do more of the lesser because this still needs to go through the Cricut and cut. You will then cut out your decal or your text, whatever you would like, and you would apply it down like normal. The only difference with this process is the distressing prior to the cutting. And then this is our sample that we did right here. It looks super distressed. And again, it's not distressed at all because of the font. It's all about that heat transfer vinyl and it looks so cool. This hack right here is perfect if you're doing any type of door hanger like we're doing in our sample today. If you're working with a large design and you have trouble positioning it down, I wanna share with you my favorite hack to save you time and make sure you don't go into having a craft fail. All you're gonna need is painter's tape. So once you've applied the transfer tape and you're weeded out your design, you're gonna want to position it down onto your blank. So we're using a wooden blank. And once you're happy with the placement, here's the secret. All you're gonna want to do is add the transfer tape and we're going to tape down our design from the wood right in the middle to the table, we're just gonna tape this completely down, just like this, and then we're gonna peel it back. All right, so what we're going to do is this is gonna allow us to work in two transactions. We're gonna do the bottom, and then we're gonna do the top. Instead of trying to do it all at once, and we may lose position, we may cause a craft fail or anything like that. Okay, so now we're gonna take the backer. We're going to simply pick a corner we're gonna peel this back. And you can see, as we peel it back, we now are gonna be able to grab our scissors and we're just gonna cut off the backer piece. Now that you've cut this off, you're gonna now lay it flat and we're just going to let this lay flat right here, just like this. And now you can see the bottom is now attached to the wood. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel this back and you can easily see, we're gonna peel back our backer here and just pull it towards us. And I like to let it lay flat for a second. 
get it all ready. Remember, there's no rush in this process. And then you're just going to naturally let it lay flat. And that's how easy it is to use the painter's tape to divide this out into a two-step process. All right, now you just peel off your transfer tape, super easy, and you'll have your awesome design good to go. There's nothing better than having a custom balloon at your next get together, your next birthday party with your Cricut, right? I'm gonna share with you my favorite hack that I learned when putting vinyl onto a glass ornament that applies the same way to putting vinyl onto a balloon. And that, my friends, is being able to first apply the transfer tape, which again is the Caesar. We're gonna burnish it down, just like so. And then here's what you're gonna want to do. Just like normal, peel it back. And then once you're here at this step, this is where I love to go in with my scissors and I just wanna make some slits. Because we're applying this to a curved surface, I've found that transfer tape has a harder time applying without the slits. So I like just adding these in here, just like so, all the way around. And this will help you when applying it to a round surface, maybe every two or three inches. So now that we have the slits, we can grab our balloon and we can start applying it down. So we're holding down our balloon and we're just gonna want to position it right down. One thing I love about balloons is that you have the ability to be super flexible. So you're just gonna wanna focus more on applying this down and positioning it rather than worrying about how the transfer tape looks. So you can peel it up, you can apply it down. This is why we love, love, love the Caesar transfer tape. You can worry about it one word at a time and even one letter at a time. And again, don't worry about the transfer tape, just worry about your individual letters. And once you're happy with your, say you're happy, notice how we can start peeling this back and it's applied down super well. So this is how I love to apply down any of my glass ornaments. So I'd follow the same tips that I've been teaching for years on the glass ornaments over here on the balloon. And then right here, you may see this letter is not applied down properly. Just grab your weeding tool and just be careful because we're gonna peel this back. and we're gonna just let this lay down again. And then look, just like that, we've worked out a bubble. You can just use your weeding tool to pick them up and just to let it lay flat again. Do not let your weeding tool poke your balloon because then it will totally pop. This is one reason why I think vinyl is super forgivable and you have multiple opportunities to work with it. And this is something I wish I taught on more, but as you can see, your vinyl is truly so forgivable, super awesome, just to be able to help it move around so that you can have the ability to get all your bubbles out. All right, and just like that, you have your very custom balloon with your vinyl on it, really easily. We couldn't have done it without the Caesar transfer tape. That is a secret. And of course, having that ability to peel up the vinyl and reposition those letters as needed. One tip I have if you're wanting to do something different than us to have better results, possibly could be to make it not as rectangular and focus in on something more square because I find some of these edges sometimes will cause it to uh, give more harder trouble laying flat, obviously because it's a round surface. So the more square and stick to this area right here, you'll get the best results. But again, nothing you can't work through. Let me know if this has been one of your favorite hacks in a comment down below. Anytime that you're cutting out a lot of letters, you may notice that it sometimes is really hard to be able to weed them. So what I wanna encourage you guys to do if you start having trouble with that, in this hack, I want you to add an offset. All you're gonna do is you're gonna add an offset and then you're gonna wanna make sure that you attach your offset to your text. 
And that's all we did for this hack. And now I'm gonna share with you exactly how and why that is gonna be super effective for when you're actually weeding the letters to give you the best result possible. So type out your text in whatever font you want, add that offset, and then all you're gonna do is attach it all together. It's that simple. And then now after it's cut out, let me share with you why this is super handy and helpful in your weeding. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and weed the outer piece first. And you can see this takes away all the excess. So typically it would be a lot more overwhelming, but with the offset, look what you can do now. You're gonna weed the offset of each word rather than doing all three words at one time. This makes it so much more simpler and easier to weed out your letters right away, really quickly, every single time. Have you ever wanted to cut out small intricate letters with HTV or vinyl? Let me put you onto something new. I've just discovered if I use the washi tape setting for my small intricate design, it's gonna cut so much better and it's gonna make it super easy to weed, where traditionally it would cause a lot of errors and craft fails in the actual cutting process. It would end up, you know, cutting too deep, different things like that, and not being as crisp. So once you're to the make it area, all you wanna do is click browse all material and just search for washi and you're gonna cut this at a washi sheet setting. And now let me share with you how easy it is to weed something, especially heat transfer vinyl, like in our sample today, cut on that washi setting. So you can see this image is really small and this could happen if you're doing a onesie or anything you know, more intricate and you're just not getting a good cut. Always be sure to check your blade, make sure there's no debris or anything like that inside the blade. And then look, you can cut this out look at your little tent. I mean, even the birds, the trees, it's super, super intricate. And sometimes your cricket just can't handle doing it um, without telling it to do lighter pressure so that you get the best cut possible. And it's that simple to just quickly change a setting to the washi setting so that you get the best cut possible when doing intricate designs. Do you ever cut out a design and you're like, wait, both pieces of the design, the one that I'm gonna weed out and the one that's gonna stay, both look really good and I could use this in two different ways. Pretty much getting two projects out of one cut. Let me share with you what you need and it's simply wax paper. Grab some wax paper for your next project and then as you start weeding out the project like we're going to do here, you're going to start weeding it and then guess what? When we apply this and peel this up, it's super simple because we're peeling this up and then look, this is now one image and this is one image. But what do you do with this one image right now? You simply put it on some wax paper and now it'll be good to go to find a new project. And now you have this one right here and it's awesome. Not every project you're gonna be able to do this with, but if you find yourself looking at an image and you're like, wait, both of these would look really good. Just have some wax paper over to the side and you can apply it on there and save it for another fun project. If you've ever wanted to do a multi-layer vinyl project on glass, let me share with you this hack right here. The first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to grab a rectangle or square the same size as your frame. This is a eight by 10 frame. So all we did was grab an eight by 10 shape and we set that to the score feature. We're not scoring today, we're just using it as a guide, all right? So once we have done this, we are going to grab our image. Our image today is a Maker's Gonna Learn image, and it is in two different colors. So we're gonna cut this out with an orange and a blue, and we've just separated them, one on the left and one on the right. Now, the one in the middle what we're doing is this one is going to draw on a piece of paper. That piece of paper is going to be the backer and it's going to go behind our glass. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this journey image and we're going to move it from a cut. We're going to move this to draw under operation. 
So we can select pin. And now you can see it shows an outline. So now Cricut knows that right here with this part of the image, the journey and the square, those are going to be able to be attached because where we have that scoring is the same place we want to have the outline. So now that that is attached, it is going to stay together the same way on the canvas as it does onto the map. So now looking at our image, on our left hand side, we have our orange vinyl. In the middle, we have our drawing where we're going to have it draw with the Cricut. And then on the right side, we have our blue layer. So those are three different images and layers we are going to need for the project. You're going to then click make it. You're going to want to cut your vinyls and you're going to want to draw on just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, uh, your outline for your back of the glass. And then we're going to use it as a grid to apply down our layers. So you can see this is what it looks like after you've been able to draw it with the Cricut. So you're going to place this on the bottom. You're going to place your glass on top. Feel free if your glass needs to be cleaned. Now is a great time to clean it with rubbing alcohol. And then we've already applied our transfer tape here. So we're going to peel off this just like so. And then look right here. It takes away all the guesswork of trying to perfectly line this up. You just want to line up the letters just like so. And then once you get the top lined up, everything else falls into place. I mean, look at that. It made it so much easier for us to apply that first layer. Now I'm going to burnish this down right here. And now I'm going to peel this back and then look, we'll have our first layer down and then we're just going to rinse and repeat this to our second layer. So now we're going to grab our second layer, peel this back. Make sure that you've lined this up properly. And now we're going to apply our last layer, which is our blue one. And then look at this. It makes it so much simpler when there's a guide that you're able to follow. Now we're going to burnish this down, peel it back and add it into our frame. Now you can see how easy it is to use a grid that you used your Cricut to draw on just a piece of copy paper to create an outline when you're working with any glass decals. This is a really fun hack and I think you'll enjoy it. Have you ever did a Cricut cut and guess what? There's a few layers that got chopped off because we didn't put the right size vinyl. Well, let me share with you how you can contour out the pieces that did cut rot so you don't have to recut them and we can share with you how this can be adhered together properly. Are you ready for it? Let's jump over to Cricut Design Space. Right here, all we need to do is contour out the top three layers because those are the three layers that cut through properly. So now we'll press contour. Once you've opened contour, you're now going to just press on the layers that cut out properly. So one, two, and three. Those are the three layers we do not need to cut again. So now we'll close out and you'll see that we just need to cut these layers that are left. So now you'll go through, cut these out, and let me share with you how you can piece them together, add transfer tape, and it's like it never happened before. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut just the three layers that cut right. We don't need to cut again. We're just gonna cut this, just like this, and we have those. You're gonna line these up right here, grab a piece of transfer tape, and you'll be able to pick up all these layers all at once for the next design. Now that you have these all lined up together, what you'll do is just grab the transfer sheet and look, they're all applied together. So what you'll do is grab that burnishing tool, burnish, 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 flip it around back, and you'll just peel off this backer. And voila, you have now saved your project and you can use it on your next Cricut project. 
We did it. You are now a Cricut Pro like no other. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Cricut Hacks to take you from a beginner to a pro, the next level version of 20 more different Cricut Hacks. These have been my favorite. I want you to leave me a comment down below and tell me which one was your favorite. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you're not already a Makers Gonna Learn member, be sure to join right down below. It is only $1 for 20 download credits and a seven day trial so that you can make sure you love all the images, the fonts, the training, the community, which I know you already will because it was designed with you in mind. If you love the channel, you'll absolutely adore your membership. So I can't wait to see you in there and be sure to join at the first link down below and I'll see you in the next video. If you're still looking for Cricut inspiration, check out this one right here.